just to show you something, see the, we're doing a Beverly Hillbillies. See the oil sheen on top of the ground? Look at that. The Beverly Hillbillies got rich discovering oil. Black gold, Texas tea. So did a lot of folks deep in the heart of Texas. But there's a price to pay, and you may be paying it. Because I knew I had salt water and I could, you know, my wife could smell it and I could smell it in bad days. In Columbus, Texas, rancher Kerry Noondorf is dealing with the filthy dregs of oil and gas production from decades gone past. A plug disposal well is leaking salt water and a cocktail of oil contaminants. Eroding his land, poisoning his groundwater, threatening the health of cattle, killing trees, and the Colorado County grass. Well, it could probably go back into the 60s because mother-in-law and father-in-law had vehicles that were rusting out because they drive across the, the crossings down here. Buried secrets spreading damage. It's gotten worse with the vegetation die off and uh, everything in the last 25 years, 30 years. The Neuendorf Well League first documented in 2003 is one of the oldest complaints of its kind made to the Texas Railroad Commission. They're the state agency that regulates the oil and gas industry in Texas. And they're also the industry's cheerleader. Kind of hard to do both. Prior to the Noondorf problem, if an underground well was plugged, well, the story was that contamination simply would never be a threat. It just didn't matter where those plug wells were, whether they were near creeks or schools or houses. But now we know that's just not true. And this contaminated well water likely caused my mother's death in late 2018 from a rare and aggressive cancer of the kidney. Ashley Watt believes the price she paid was the death of her mother. 68-year-old Mary Watt died from a rare, aggressive form of adrenal gland cancer. Only a few years later, Ashley discovered the groundwater of her family's West Texas cattle ranch was contaminated, buried secrets from corroding oil wells. We've had to sell off all our cattle. Um, we have to ship in our water. We can't drink it from our water wells anymore. Uh, it's been a disaster. It's ruined our way of life. Ashley inherited the sprawling Antina Ranch after both of her parents passed away. It's located in the Permian Basin, the heart of the state's oil and gas industry. Inexplicably, uh, in 2021, all of a sudden, some old wells started spraying brine water out of them. Um, and we had no idea, and so we had to start investigating. Ashley turned to the Texas Railroad Commission, but something was very wrong. The last time I was here was over a year ago. I came asking for your help. We had three or four wells that had bubbled to surface, old plugged Chevron wells, um, and we wanted help to know what's going on. You rejected us and wouldn't do a thing. You told us nothing was wrong. After proving on her own a priceless tragedy to her land, Ashley Watt came back to Austin this month. So I'm here pleading, like what will it take? How many wells do I have to dig up that are flowing brine to the surface? How many water well tests do we have to do? I have spent millions of dollars on this. It's not my wells, it's Chevron's wells. It's the Railroad Commission's responsibility. Look at it, well shooting salty water into the air with the pressure of a Las Vegas fountain but this is no tourist attraction. It's a warning to so many of us. And we've now dug up hundreds of wells and they're all failing. Like, the, it is shocking. And you can't even tell its surface. You can only tell once you dig them up. Leaking, plugged, and abandoned wells. Ashley might not be able to see them all as she scoured her vast ranch, but those buried secrets, they were poisoning her land. A possible death sentence for her mom. I mean, you name it, we've seen it. Benzene, crude oil, radioactivity. That's what people don't know is a lot of this oil field waste. Um, it's radioactive, it's deep underground. Ashley isn't just digging into the poison ground of the Antina Ranch. She's now digging into the buried secrets all over this state. The Railroad Commission has been utterly unhelpful, who's the regulator for oil and gas, and so we've had to take the investigation in our own hands. And Dolce Vino Consulting has joined the investigation. And it's very clear the Railroad Commission doesn't like it, especially when we dare to approach Christy Craddock, the chairwoman of this powerful state agency. It's an outrageous display of government arrogance. Our crew is pushed and shoved. Will you talk to us about the uh, the uncapped wells, the, the leaking wells? 
We'd already filed a request under state law for all complaints about leaking plug wells in the entire state for the past three years. We were told there were just four complaints, including Ashley's land in Monahans. But how could that be? The Railroad Commission refused to let us interview a single one of their more than 400 employees. But they didn't know we had already talked to Dean Southward, the Railroad Commission cleanup coordinator in the Houston area. For the last nine and a half years, I have dealt with the bottom of the bottom. That's all I do. And he's surprised we found any complaints. If you have a plugged well, it can't leak. The problem is, is that when you actually call a well plugged for you, People to say that it is leaking after means that it, it's kind of a big deal. And, and it's, it's something that they really don't put in writing. And if you want to like directly connect a leaking well to environmental impact, then our other site out in Columbus is that exactly that. June 2003 is the first time that I got a paperwork from that I kept. Kerry opens up a wad of documents he's gotten from the Railroad Commission over the 20 years he's been fighting to get justice. When we look for the Neuendorf case on the Railroad Commission website, though, look, you get no results. We should all care about Kerry's fight. The contamination is not very far from the Colorado River. It's Walters Creek there which turns into Red Gates Creek, which turns into Cummins Creek, which turns into the Colorado River. That's why this is important. Yeah, probably so, because it probably wasn't going to get any better. It's going to get worse over time. The whole assumption in oil and gas is you drill a well, you operate it, you pull oil and gas out of it, and when you're done, you plug it. You put cement in it, and then it's considered plugged and abandoned. It's, it's done. It's forever considered um, an afterthought. The problem is, if you now have to re-plug wells, and they only last 20, 30, 40 years before they come unplugged, you now have millions of landmines that you have left across the state. But finding these potential landmines, well, it's not easy. This is the geographic informational system on the RRC website. As you zoom in, little icons populate. There are different colors, different shapes. That green dot with the slash through it, that's a plugged oil well. Look at all the green in Northwest Houston, near 290 in the Beltway the greater Inwood area. We can zoom all the way into the corner of Jaywood and Vernwood. Is it worrisome? I mean, now it is, now that I know that there's possibly something down there. I mean, yeah, I don't know what could happen. It's where Victor Torres lives. According to the Railroad Commission's well mapping system, there's a plug well right in his front yard. Did you even know? No, I didn't know. How long you lived here? At least a decade or so. He likely didn't know because you can't see where it is. It's not marked. Would you like it to be marked somewhere that there used to be a well here? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be nice. It could spill out and damage my lawn or, you know, do more harm to the environment. We found more plug wells under neighborhoods, near creeks. In southeast Houston, there are plugged oil and gas wells on school grounds. Again, you can't see exactly where, nor do we know if there are buried secrets leaking near where the children play. Unmarked wells can be dug up accidentally too. Last November, an excavator hit this old well in Baytown that shot oil up into the trees. And the Railroad Commission spent $85,000 cleaning up the 99 Toll Road Goose Creek blowout. A rural community in Liberty County fears they are in danger because of an oil spill. Dean Southwood also had to address that oily mess in Dayton this year. Just a simple, just a well that started leaking. It was like some old abandoned well and our guys got it shut in and we're going out there Wednesday to clean up the little, I don't know, like maybe 40 barrels of oil. Damage from the early days of drilling are real. Like you see here where the ground opened up in Dizetta in 2008, the famous sinkhole. That's an old, that's an oil field map of the Dizetta Dome. Richard Howe is a petroleum geologist, considered the big expert on the sinkhole. Those are oil wells that have been that produced and some have been abandoned. The red circle there is the original hole. That's the original sinkhole. A second hole opened up this past May. When the sinkhole collapsed, witnesses said, when the, at the moment that it collapsed, for a few seconds, there was like four or five uh, casing strings sticking up in the air. 
like fingers sticking up out of the water for a few seconds and then they collapsed. Looking at the concentration of the drilling activity circling Dizetta, well, it's kind of scary. A lot of these are not filled. I've got on the northern perimeter, and I have photos in this PowerPoint presentation of open wells just sitting there at the surface. Laura Calzada has an open well in Cat Springs, but hers was abandoned more than five years ago. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. All I know is it's an 15,000 foot well, and it's just sitting there. The ranch includes a five-acre well site where the cows can't graze anymore. She says the lease was sold to Ford Apache and then sold to a company called TC Oil and Gas. Nobody can find anybody at TC Oil and Gas. We found them. The two-year-old company has been cited by the Railroad Commission for multiple plugging violations statewide. And they're real friendly. I have all the answers. I just don't know who you are. We're an independent media group. That's who we are, mm -hmm. and we, yeah. Okay, yeah, I ain't talking to you. Thank you, have a nice day. If there's a well on your property, you can't assume it's being taken care of. Just to let it sit there for eternity is crazy. Why am I spending millions of dollars to do your job regulating the oil and gas industry? Chevron has refused to clean up the environmental mess we found at the Antina Ranch. Perhaps they know they'll be on the hook for other cleanups across Texas, too. The legal liability could be enormous, a financial nightmare, shockwaves throughout the industry. Maybe that's why Chevron has ignored repeated requests to interview Ryder Booth. He's the vice president in charge of the Permian Basin region. Just how many buried secrets have been left behind from plugged and abandoned wells all over our state? The people that get hurt are the little people, the ranchers, the, the landowners, the property owners. They're the ones that get screwed.